This is Happiness, a Skeptic's Guide, a podcast that aims to explore the explosion of wellness and find the things that could actually make you happier. As we approach our journey's end, we stop off for a gratitude break and look at how the practice of gratitude relates to previous episodes in putting together an action-led happiness plan. If you haven't already done so, please follow, like, subscribe and share with others. So, without further ado... Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Happiness the Skeptic's Guide with Dr. Gary Wood and myself, Paul Flower. We are very grateful that you chose to join us and even more grateful if you review, rate and subscribe to this podcast. And the reason we're expressing such gratitude is because we're very grateful people. And today's episode looks at happiness and its relationship with gratitude, which is beneficial. You'll be unsurprised to hear. Yeah, gratitude and milk in it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I am grateful for anybody and to anybody that listens to this podcast. They are making me happier by doing so. Damn, (laughs) mate. Is that it? That was part of the exercise, wasn't it? (laughs) Right then. So what what is gratitude then? So we could say the gratitude is it's just recognising a positive outcome and its impact on you, recognising the external source of that outcome. And maybe there's a bit of self-gratitude. I'm thinking back. We used to have a – it's connected, with, I think, with grace. Because we used to have, when we were you know, a less secular society, we would say, thank you for – the- To achieve a state of grace. Yeah. yeah thank, so thank you. Prayers for- would be, thank you for this, thank you for that. Yeah. And if you've watched any of the, any of the episodes on um, – uh, there's quite a, a rash of uh, – series dramatic series about judaism to a certain extent and and in a lot of uh i'll get there eventually um and a lot of judaic sects they you know they give thanks to for everything really thank you for being there thanks for this plate that i'm having my dinner on thank you know there seems to be a lot of thanks being extended shall we say well if you think about it the you, life is quite i mean life is quite miraculous in a way uh, and the, the chances of things happening, I mean, if you, you think about them, they're all little miracles. Mm. I was thinking the other day about coffee, uh, and I'm always grateful for a decent coffee. But you think about the process that that went through to get – so someone was sitting there one day, and they thought, oh, look at those cherries on that bush. So they picked them off, and they go, oh, these taste like <laughs> – So they threw them in the fire, <laughs> and then suddenly someone says, what's that gorgeous that good, smell? Yeah. And then they realise how they picked out them and they ground them up. And then someone says, hmm, you know what this needs? A bit of milk. And so, oh, that's much better if we froth the milk as well. And then some smart <laughs> was picking the, uh, I don't know where it would be. They say, you know what this needs? We need those beans to pass through the digestive tract of a civet cat. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the most expensive coffee you can coffee get. Coffee you can yeah. buy, yeah. So it's in, it is interesting. But it's a miracle. A, um, I think I, I remember a instance of a guy wanting to say thank you to everybody that was involved in the cup of coffee that he was drinking. So he kind of traced the supply line and where it came from, and there were something like 300 different people involved in the process of making that cup of coffee decent. And he went through trying to say thank you to each and every one of them, which is a hell of an exercise it is it's probably it's a bit extreme but you think going back to we don't say we don't sit at the table anymore and say thank you for food and you also get because we've watched so many of those tv chef shows with the awful chefs you know there's a classy chef when the first words to come out of their mouth, you know, on these master chef pro- type programs, when they've got the the expert there, the first words to come out of the mouth is always something nice. So you've got Michel Roussini, you've got all the top chefs. They would always say, "This is this is good." Then that's a way of giving thanks. And then they would come, but you know, but you know, it tastes like feces. They would they would basically bring that in second, but they'd say you know it, at least it doesn't look like it. So it's appreciation as much as gratitude, isn't it? You, yes, you're trying to be appreciative of of people, things, and surroundings. And you did set an exercise, um, or you have set an exercise, uh, both on your website and sent it to me recently. And because you love actions, you you really wanted me to kind of get involved in this. And but did you do it? I really. 
Well, I kind of understand the logic behind it and, and focusing on the blessings, not the burdens. Um, and I obviously recognize the negativity bias, but I really struggled with it. But And the reason I struggled it is the same reason that I would struggle to stand in front of a mirror and give myself a pep talk. It just feels dumb to do it. You know? okay. So if we take... So you can know, I just ask, he, how long was the struggle? Uh, the struggle was significant. Um, uh, how many days did you manage it? Um, so far, uh, two or three. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna, That's I'm more gonna than I expected, about, to be honest. <laughs> okay, thank you. So there, there is, the, so there's three things that you do, really. There's anticipation. You, you say that um, at the start of the day, think of three things that, you, that you're anticipating to be good about the day. Looking forward to it. And you. then at the end of the day, you're giving gratitude to three things and three people. Now, this felt like a lot to me. Um, it is. And so, so let me take take an example. So last Thursday, what did what did I have to look forward to? I was I was taking the car for a service, going for a dental checkup, Ooh. and had two particularly difficult work meetings. On Friday, I had four back to back meetings that would would just eat up the whole day. So obviously, I know I can spin this for the gratitude section in that I'm privileged to have a car to be able to afford one. I'm lucky to be in work, however difficult the meetings, and I'm fortunate to live in England where we have NHS dentists, even if it isn't free of charge. So, you know, I'd, I'd hate to be the the kind of outlier, but some of these exercises have the opposite effect on me to the intended because I I end up feeling guilty. And stupid that I can't fulfil them. It feels a bit like failure. Does that make sense? It, it's entirely possible that you, you're setting your standards. I told you, don't try and keep up with the Joneses. Drag them down to your level. <laughs> so my the way I start the exercise for the gratitude and the anticipation, it could be as simple as I'm looking forward to a decent cup of coffee today. That could be one of them. Mm. It doesn't but matter. I know on your so, on, the, on your website you wanted it to be different things for every day. So, you know, I could be looking forward to a great cup of coffee every day. Well, that's fine. But you you really want to spread that around. Well, the idea is as long as you get something down, and and the aim would be to find something different. But if a cup of coffee is the thing that makes you happy, as it is in my case, then that I might say that for 30 days. Hmm. Uh, And I might vary the other two. Uh, And the same with gratitude. At the end, I'm probably going to comment on something I've eaten or something I've drunk. Because those things just make me... Because your stomach rules your life, yeah. Uh, Well, I think... I mean, there's there's one thing about food, isn't there? It just tastes so good. Um, And that's that's it. And why not... You've never had me cook for you, obviously. No, obviously not. Uh, So I'm quite into cooking and quite into experimenting with with food as well and thinking, well, this thing will go with this thing. And people go, nah, that'll never work. And then they try it and they go... Oh, yeah, it does. So food makes me happy. And I I eat a lot, but I do walk as well. So a walk in the park could make me happy. Uh, that would be something to be grateful for. The fact that, you know, I'm still breathing, um, that could make me happy. Yeah. It, you start off. One thing I say is start off really, really small. And because what you're trying to do is you're trying to build almost a habit. So if you start off really small, I used to use the phrase, something you can do even if you've got the flu. And of course, since the pandemic, nobody wants to be reminded of viruses. (laughs) But it's the the old test, isn't it, of the flu? You know, if you're sitting in your sitting room there and outside a £50 note or a $100 bill sticks to your window, would you go out and get it? If it's a cold, you'd go out and get it. If it's the flu, you go, I can't be bothered. (laughs) So the idea is to make it really something small that you could do. And then just to do it, the idea is, is I've noticed there's a, the the rationalizing it beforehand. The rationalizing needs to come at the end. Okay. After the 30 days, not at the start. You just do it anyway as an experiment. You're starting with a hypothesis. You're carrying out an experiment. You're getting a result. If you, overthink it all every time you never get to the experiment phrase you never get to any results and you never get the magical cure to anything well we've gone very quiet again 
No, it's so it, you know it's all about the actions, isn't it? That, that I mean, that's what you're saying, and you say that quite regularly. So it it is about the action of gratitude. Now, what what I think is beneficial about gratitude, and then I, then I happen to see a, an article in Psychology Today about it, is that you know it's reciprocal. It's something that you you, you sort of expect to be uh, reciprocated. So you know when if you fail to express gratitude when gratitude's appropriate, it it kind of leads to bad feelings. You might say generosity unrequited tends to wither intimacy as it says in this piece but yeah. you know it, it's something that if if you're sharing it around you're going to get it back you know so it, it's it's almost as if it's about kindness as much as anything else you're being kind-hearted to be grateful and also being so it's in, yeah. encouraging a kindness in, in yourself also being mindful i mean you've reminded me is that I, I, I've observed people who live together and are, you know, supposedly close and, and I can watch them and one will hand another one a cup of tea and the other will just reach out, Take grab it. the cup of tea and drink it. Mm. I never do that. I always say thank you. Yeah, so do I. And that's, that's a simple act of gratitude is just to give you giving thanks. So it's actually being mindful. So when you've said he's not expressing gratitude when the opportunity arises, if we're more mindful, then we're more likely to express gratitude. One of the ways I've always – it's interesting, actually, having um, occasionally working with famous people or uh, musicians and, and um, pop stars, if you like, what, I think one, one of the ways I've always found to see how grounded they are is if they thank you for something. Because the, yeah. the minute that they stop thanking you or don't think to thank you, you kind of feel that they've gone beyond their – their normal state, they think too much of themselves. Oh, I think that's definitely okay. I've I've seen some, you know, I've seen some famous people, and you could and the the truly you know the good ones, the ones who are as good as they think they are, uh, are lovely people. They say they're thank very you. Humble. They're yeah. polite. Uh, mediocrity tends to be really that's when the diva behavior comes in hmm. but that you know some of that could be a fear of failure and, and not sort of being good at interacting with people and you just suddenly shoved amongst a, a bunch of people who expect more from you which i'm sure is very difficult for for lots of uh, recording artists yes and famous people generally anyway going back the idea then the idea behind gratitude is it it, it helps to re kind of reprogram us slightly in a way we talked in episode was it five or six about the autonomic nervous system, the you know the mm -hmm. the stress reaction, the anxiety reaction, and gratitude kind of operates on the same level. So it can neutralise some of those anxious feelings. It can neutralise resentment and envy, and and it can also stop that rumination. So because what we're doing is we are when we're ruminating, we're focusing on threats. So the idea of rumination means to keep going over things in your head. And it comes from the idea that a cow's got four stomachs and they, uh, the rumination is that they vomit up a little bit, have a good chew and then eat it again. So if, if you think about that in terms of when you keep vomiting back up your thoughts going over again, <laughs> vomiting back up, that's the recipe for depression. A way to stop that is one of the ways is actually to being mindful and also practicing gratitude. Uh -huh. It can actually short circuit some of that. So the thing that I've spent three days doing, you you anticipate that I should spend 30 days trying to do that? I periodically do that exercise uh, probably about every three to six months, and I will just do it for 30 days. Okay. And, I don't, and, and I've been doing that for oh – I'm just trying to think how long. Right. I mean, the, the article on your, your website goes back – 10 years or so yeah I think, and i've been doing it that. probably and i think you reference richard wiseman's book 59 seconds which i have a copy of but still haven't read. yeah i've mentioned that probably i meant well, that's quite old as well. i mentioned it in my book don't wait for your ship to come in some out to meet it which was 2008 and i'd already i uh, i don't put things in books that i haven't done myself okay so i went on the yoga breathing courses i went on the creative visualization courses i did the experiments it's been around a long time 
but I don't think I've ever done it and it hasn't had an effect. It's interesting you said rebalancing. I think that, that's yeah, an important it rebalances. thing to think about. Yeah. Sometimes we can get a little bit too busy and a little bit wrapped up in our own thoughts and having some gratitude for the things that have got you there. You know, And, for, and I've, I've read a lot recently about a lot of people got where they are because of luck more than judgment or qualifications or whatever. Let's hope that's not true of your surgeon. But, you know, it, it's um, there's a lot more luck involved in our day-to-day lives than we probably care to admit um, is the point that I'm trying to make. And so therefore, you know, we should inherently be more grateful for the good things that happen to us because we are very lucky in, in the, the respect to get some of those good things. Well, you've mentioned Richard Wiseman. He also had a book out called The Luck Factor. Okay. And people who see themselves as being more lucky actually are more lucky. I, I'm not, I can't remember the exact uh, details of the experiments, but people were summoned to this place to do this, you know, are you a lucky person experiments? And I think it was either on the way or on the way out, there was a 10 or 20 pound notes that they could find. Hmm. And, you know, the lucky people and unlucky people had an equal chance of finding it, but statistically significantly more lucky people found the money, uh, which is just mind blowing. Yeah. So what it tends to do, it tends to rebalance and retune your perception filters so you are seeing more good stuff. Because when when something bad to, happens to us, obviously we want to do a, a bit of a post-mortem. But when something good happens to us, we don't necessarily go into the same level of depth. So I always say there's uh, bad news comes in threes, but there's no standard multi-pack for good news. Yeah. And the gratitude experiment can help to just re-tweak that a little bit. I think the other the other thing that came out of the Psychology Today article I was reading, and we will post a link to it on our Twitter, is that you know, expressing gratitude is going to amplify the effect that you receive from you know having gratitude almost. Yes, right? yeah. So expressing it to other people is going to really bump up the effects of that in your life it's not just thinking it and feeling it it is doing it so it's again it's the action of actually saying the words you know you you think about in the last episode we talked about love and you can love someone but if you never say it to them how do they really know all they know all they know the way i look no they don't know unless you tell them uh you can you can demonstrate it as much as you like but people want to hear the words Excellent. So, I hope uh, you've heard our words and been grateful for them today. Just to finish off is that it does also connect back to that hassles and uplifts theories that we also talked about in, in number five and number six. You can think about when you're grateful or say thank you to someone, you could be giving them a little uplift and you could be making their day a little bit better. Yes, which is really important. And knowing that you've done, uh, knowing that you've done that can be a boost. Uh, because it also, the, the idea of counting our blessings and expressing uh, uh, gratitude connects with the, the, the feel-good chemicals, things like dopamine and serotonin. So we can actually be giving ourselves a, a, a very, very slight chemical boost. And I think that's... That's it then, isn't it? So as I said, it's- everybody wants a little boost, you know, there's no question about that. So let's, let's take the boosts where we can get them. And this is definitely one that's, that's quite easy for everybody to translate into reality. Isn't it? There's a, years ago, I did this thing and it's really quite um, profound. And it's, I forget what it's called now. It was, it was a Buddhist d- day retreat I did. And there was like this walk we did. And we just had to look people in the one eye and we just had to beam positive thoughts to them. Beaming your thoughts into the heart of another. Yes. At the moment, I'm going, I'm just about to start an exercise where I'm going to be doing 40 uh, guided meditations called First Invite Love In. And a lot of that is about just meeting strangers and wishing good thoughts, just making a little bit of eye contact and wishing them good thoughts. Mm. And there's there's lots of things on using chants, um, mantras to actually clear things. So you you can actually do that with gratitude. Uh, just repeat on a daily basis what you're grateful for. And if you thought that one was a little bit time consuming, what you can do is you can do a gratitude jar. So <laughs> All right, this is where you write it down and put it. Just in jar. write yeah, one yeah, piece yeah. of on a little piece of paper and poke it in a jar. And then after, I think you need to do this a little bit longer. And then just after I say, I don't know, a couple of months, get yourself a nice, in my case, cup of coffee 
and have a flick through your jar. Good, that sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put that in the romance episode. Yes, yes. Go on, get a cup of coffee. <laughs> but self-love, you didn't mention self-love in the, ro- the romance episode, as it have, goes. But have a go. good rummage in your jar, your gratitude <laughs> jar. But that's a simpler version. <laughs> but it, it's the idea of committing to do these things as an experiment, and you have to get past the point at which it feels, what's the point? This is stupid. Yeah. Uh, because years ago, you know, the, we used to hear about tree huggers and people would say, what's the point in that? They're idiots. Who wants to dr- hug a tree? It's not necessarily the hugging the tree that is the important thing. It's the freedom to be able to hug the tree and it's what goes with it. So if you hug the tree and you've got all that baggage with it, oh, this is stupid, this is stupid, can you hug the tree without the baggage? Maybe that's when you've got there. So I would like you to go out now between now and just hug a few trees. Yeah, they're a bit damp at the minute, so I'll leave yes. them out. But um, I, hear, I hear where you're coming from. And I am extremely grateful for your insight in this. Oh, episode. very good. But if I see something in the Coventry Gazette about man out hugging trees and arrested, <laughs> I'm quite happy for you to give my uh, name and number and I'll come and bail you out. I certainly will. Don't worry about that. Thank you for joining us today. We do appreciate it. We really do appreciate it. And we'd appreciate it more if you'd rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you can. And subscribing is the most important thing. That means you don't miss a thing. All this insight is free of charge. That was and is Happiness, A Skeptic's Guide with Paul Flower and me, Gary Wood. This time we explored happiness and gratitude with a soupçon of mindfulness and a dollop of stress relief thrown in for good measure. And next time we roll back to take a deeper dive into positive psychology. If you like the podcast, please follow, like, subscribe and share with others. And if you've really enjoyed it, you can support the show at buymeacoffee.com forward slash skeptics guide. 